to order. Please rise for the flag salute. Chief Biagi, lead us, please. please. Attention, salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America. And, to and to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Kriebel? Here. Commissioner Landgraf? Here. Mayor Holtzman? Here. Pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the law. So first thing we're going to do tonight is we have two young ladies to recognize, which I don't know the one, but I know the other one, since she was little. I'm going to read the... Um, Certificates of Special Recognition, and then um, we'll have you come up, and the commissioners and I will present them to you, and then you can take pictures with your parents, okay? Where's Julia? Is that you? I know who Lauren is. Okay. So this is a Certificate of Special Recognition presented to Julia, Julia Logue, whose quick thinking, courage, and steadfastness motivated her to call 911 on July 26, 2019, in the life-threatening situation, ultimately saving a life. God bless you. And I get, I'm doing yours last, Lauren, or second because it was your father. You could get anything from him now <laughs> for the rest of just as long as you don't put it in a plastic bag. Hi, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> I love him. The Certificate of Special Recognition presented to Lauren Merlino for your quick thinking, courage, and heroic action on July 26, 2019, which contributed to saving the life of your father. That's quite yeah.
me. Check the camera. Thank you. You're welcome. See you. We know. We know, them. we know. Of course you know them. Back Go ahead, Sight. Go ahead. Okay. We are going to jump right to our um, Superintendent of Public Works, Engineer Ed Stinson, because he has some things he'd like to present to the commission, and then he needs to go. Correct? Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, on, on your agenda tonight, we have two resolutions. Uh, the first resolution is awarding a contract for asphalt installations. We solicited three prices. Uh, the low bidder was $13,568 from uh, Cement Works Plus LLC, their local company here in Ventnor. It consists of um, asphalt installation on uh, utility trenches that Public Works has opened and temporarily restored, and also some asphalt restoration adjacent to new concrete gutters that were installed under the Fariazi concrete to alleviate some of the, um, the uh, issues at certain spots throughout the island, um, Little Rock and Winchester being the, the largest one. Uh, that's the first resolution, uh, and our recommendation is for the award of that contract. Second resolution is a final work change order. Uh, you may recall we awarded a contract to El Fariazi Concrete uh, for accessible ramp installation in the uh, Heights section of town. Uh, that was done to um, fix concrete gutter and install the handicap ramps on the corners prior to South Jersey gas required paving of those streets. Um, in that contract, we did a lot of extra work we added work to that contract. We replaced um, almost double the amount of concrete gutter that we had originally anticipated, um, well more than double the um, curbing, additional driveways. We did also work at, um, we put in the pad for the, the new lifeguard garage on Surrey Avenue, and we picked off a couple problem areas throughout the island that we had with uh, concrete gutter. Uh, so the change order there, there's an appendix that, that shows the increases in those quantities. Uh, the increase in the contract is roughly $130,000, uh, but it is um, almost entirely additional curbing, additional uh, gutters, additional sidewalk, and curbing. And our recommend, recommendation and request is that you approve the change order. Yeah. Ed and I were, and Public Works, we reviewed all this, these additional items, and they're all needed repairs. And you had the um, we had the contract here, we had the contractor here. It was efficient to get it done while he was here, and the work was done well and quickly done. So right. if you drive down some of the streets and the heights that were paved that we added, you'll see certain sections. We, we fixed some drainage issues we had, uh, some broken curb, things of that nature. Um, really worthwhile effort. Oh, yeah, it makes sense. And, and, and going for another contract. We were getting the streets paved by South Jersey Gas. We wanted to make sure we had fixed as much as we could on our side before that paving happened. Right. So right. it was well worth the money. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It's not something we want to do all the time to add this much to a contract, right. but this works yeah. for us. So okay. good. Thanks. Thank Ed. you. Thank you. That's it. Have a good night. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. And it was a capital. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was in capital. It was in for, capital. Yeah. We had the money there. It's just yeah. that particular contract. Yeah. Was, was a little higher. You want to get Ernie while he's here? And, oh, yeah. And yeah. You want to wait till we get to that? The back truck, right? The back truck. Ernie, do you want to come up and talk about the, the back truck so we can get yeah. that done as well? And then we'll, because it's a short meeting tonight. Okay. What's that? Yeah. Um, water and wastewater. Uh, oh. I've been here since April of uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. One of the needs that we've seen uh, when I got here is. Uh, we spent a lot of money as far as our collection system. Um, we're hiring a lot of uh, vendors, and a lot of that is for our collection system. And we have brought in a vector truck after vector truck uh, going through our system, which is obviously aged. And about six to eight months ago, uh, Commissioner Lance, myself, and also John Connor, and Ed uh, Stinson, uh, conceived of possibly buying a factor truck. 
Well, that law stay, uh, sits to eight month, uh, basically going out to vendors in the area that sell this. Uh, we have thoroughly researched it. Uh, we came down to three vendors, and uh, of those, we compared everything. Uh, one was price, one was training, uh, one was um, the availability of maintenance and how close they are to us as far as where their shop is. And uh, lastly, um, the truck itself. Now, um, we've selected a vendor, and we base that on those four characteristics. Uh, the vendor that we've selected has given us training um, for not only our operators that are going to run the machine, uh, they're also going to uh, train our mechanics. So if there's something simple that goes wrong on this large vehicle, we can handle it in-house rather than dragging it to them. So um, price, they were actually the lowest. Um, as far as the truck is concerned, pretty much what I uh, viewed and John Connor and Ed Stimson reviewed about, they're basically all the same. They have their pluses and minuses depending on the vendor. When they have a vendor better uh, pump on it, one may have better uh, hose that is used, just different things that I have on it. Is that the exact truck, Ernie? Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the exact truck, except minus uh, the back wheels. Uh, it's only a single axle. This would be used around town to clean uh, our wastewater collection systems. We would lift manholes, clean the lines, clean the manhole. The other thing uh, that it would be able to do is we would be able to go around and clean storm sewers. Uh, right now we have a storm, uh, we have a small vector at Public Works. Uh, it's very small and we can collect literally three storm sewers then we have to run back to Public Works and dump it. So, and it, plus it's 30 plus years old. Works, but the idea behind this is to actually, we're going to save money. Uh, we're going to be able to get a hold ahead of all of our collection system. We're not going to have to rely on somebody to uh, call and be there for us in our need, a time of need. Uh, we'll be able to go around and visit each and every manhole in the city, each and every storm drain, and that way we can uh, get a real good handle of our system. Um, like I said, we've done a lot of research and uh, pretty much uh, we've selected the vendor uh, to uh, hopefully purchase this vehicle. Do so you have any questions? I've been involved with, with Ernie and Ed looking at this thing and, and really the, the sewer and water team over at Public Works. I mean, it was the day they brought the vehicle down, we had any guy that even would touch the vehicle, you know, asking questions and, and you know, Snake and, and, and Joey and those guys were they had some good questions about it. How do you do this? How would you do that? Right. What can this do in this case? So what this does, the front end, you see that in that orange area? Mm -hmm. That's a hose. It's a jet hose. This, we have a jet truck now. We have a very small towable vector. This com combines Everything. both of those right. things into one unit. <clears throat> the front is the hose, and the back is in that the elephant-looking trunk coming mm -hmm. around the front. That's the vector. What it can also do is you can do what's called hydraulic excavation. So if we're in an area where we can't get in there with a backhoe, you might damage some pipe that's down there. You use the vector and you have a hookup where you can do a spray nozzle. And you spray water into there and that vector loosens up, the water loosens up the material, the dirt, and then it shoots it up into the vacuum. So um, that truck that came down, the two axle, didn't fit on all of our streets. Okay. So we had to get a little bit smaller one okay. um, to get down some of our side streets. Um, this can, an example yesterday, what did, what did video pipe cost us for yesterday? Probably about $2,000. That was a day. Hmm. They're here multiple times a month, mm -hmm. several dozen times a year. Right. This, this is a machine that can and help us. Our guys do the work. We know how to use it, and, and we don't have to bring in video pipe for that anymore. And so we're not calling it an emergency situation. Or it's over. Right. Exactly. We're, right. We're doing it proactively, and it's exactly. regular maintenance, which is what we're trying to accomplish throughout. Right now, we're trying to do um, the stormwater maintenance with our, as Ernie indicated, the towable vector, and it's too small. It, you've seen it. It's a yellow, it looks like a, just a big bubble on the back of a trailer, and it's just too small. 
the capacity's not there, um, it takes too long to, to do. We will take us too much longer to do the maintenance. And our stormwater's it's aging, so we, we've got to clean it out. You get sand in it, you get a lot of things in it. So do other cities have it there? Um, Atlantic City, their sewer authority has two, Ernie? They have two in Atlantic City. Uh, Margate is contracted out to Video Pipe. Yeah. Um, Lone Power has their own, but it's very aged. Um, let's see, Summers Point has uh, two of their own. Um, Northfield has two. Uh, we actually went down to Cape May, they have two. Uh, they just purchased a new one within the year. So they're around. Uh, we went up to uh, Egg Harbor, um, what is that, egg, Little Egg, up by uh, lower part of, uh, what is that? Uh, Ocean County. Ocean, yeah, a lower part of Ocean County. Uh, they had two of them. So municipalities do have them. Um, I think the biggest thing for us is that over time, I know we will pay for it. Um, I know last year we spent over $40,000 to video pipe and another vendor, North Atlantic Pipe. Mm -hmm. Easily uh, we'll be able to do, um, take that money and uh, we'll pay for itself easily. Sure. And then and one note you said about the hydro excavation. One thing that's gonna happen over uh, the next 10 years is uh, the state's gonna require all digging to be done by hydro uh, excavation. Uh, they're gonna be taking away your backhoes. Uh, the problem being is they don't want you to hit any kind of utilities. With hydro excavation, uh, you can't. You're using water to apply to the ground and actually suck it into the machine. Right. So that was another thought and uh, a additive to add to the machine when we were purchasing it. And this is a um, machine, it's actually, what we did is we spec'd it out to exactly what we would need for our city. What's the cost, Ernie? 367. 367. Okay. It's a very pricey machine, but I know we'll get our value out of it. Okay. Ernie, you may want to talk to whoever does the community rating system for Ventnor, because I know if you have a scheduled maintenance program for street sweeping and cleaning the catch basins, you get points towards your community rating uh, number, and the lower that number goes, the more of a discount to people in Ventnor who own flood insurance policies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ed, Ed mentioned that when we first talked about this. So we'll, Dean, we'll get Dino on that in uh, actually summer. Uh, okay. Well, we all know, I mean, the, the infrastructure has been our biggest anchor oh, in this yeah. town. And this is an opportunity to be proactive. <laughs> about the, no, I'm not, it's not you personally. It's a cinder it's block on, your, <laughs> our, our, on our <laughs> ankles. We, yeah. we found one of them yesterday. In Actually, we, yeah, yesterday we found the cinder block in our uh, collection system. A cinder block? Yes. yes. And I just said that as a joke. No, uh, seriously, yesterday we did find one. Somebody had to physically open that manhole and throw it in there. Great. And uh, I was telling that to somebody at ACUA, and he said he gave me one of his horror stories. He said that uh, they found the bowling ball, and one yeah. he was nice. working on at one point in his career. It's crazy stuff you find in there. Yeah. So, so one of the reasons we brought this in is this is a discussion item. Yes. But I'd like to move it into a resolution. I got so we can get this Tonight, order. Yes, okay. The timeline for this is probably six to nine Yeah, I was months. looking. It's not on. Okay, so we're yeah. going to add that tonight? We're going to add that tonight. We have okay. the resolution here. Great. We'll add that to our, our items. And uh, right. we'll get it here as soon as we, we have can. A Just add it on. The, what number is it? 251. Uh, can I answer any more questions? I think we're good. The actual name of it is? The H.A. DeHart & Son equipped, or it's a, a vacuum <coughs> unit and water wastewater treatment. I'm just going to say the vacuum public work back. There you go. Oh, <laughs> would you like me to go okay. through my... Uh, no, we're good. We're no, good. I'm, oh. Not about the vector. Oh. Would you like me to do my monthly report? Well, no, no, we're, no we're not doing them. You're not, you don't we're good. Okay. Thank okay. you, Ernie. Thank you so much. Okay. Ernie, you're going to send the written if you didn't yet. Send a written. You're sending it. I'll just. A written report. Just send you an email what I've got. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for coming. Have a nice weekend. Okay. So we'll move on now. We do not have any um, department head reports. We are not discussing capital. 
We will not have any minutes to approve. We do not have any ordinances to introduce. We do not have any ordinances to adopt, nor public hearing. What we do have are resolutions that we will vote on by consent, and I'll go through the few that have not been already discussed. So the first one is resolution 2019-241, and that is uh, uh, authorizing us to accept the annual audit, which I know was good. We had no material findings. Am I correct? Correct. Uh, we okay with that? Yes. Okay. Next is 2019-242, tax abatement, 1B North Victoria Avenue. The next is 2019-243, and that, is that the one? That's not, uh, general. oh, no, this is a resolution um, we're in a contract to author, author, Arthur Henry for general repairs and construction of utilities on an ad need basis for, the emerg for yep. emergency purposes. Yep, so $15,991. Thank you. You okay with that, Tim? Yes. Okay. Next is 2019-244, and that is a seasonal employee. This is a, an additional person for our surf camp, and it is as needed, correct? Mm -hmm. we need, correct. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. The next is 2019-245, another tax abatement, which is 1A North Victoria Avenue. Next is 2000, okay, the next two, I think it's E and... On. E and F, 2019-246 and 247 are the two that Ed Stinson spoke about. Actually, F and G. Is it F and G? Oh, yeah, I can't say. F and G, sorry. Mr. Stinson reported on that, so I don't think we need to say anything else. Nope. The next is 2019-248, and that is a resolution authorizing a shared service between the city of Margate and the city of Ventnor for the use of their dog park. And the resolution has a dollar amount, 3,500, correct? Correct. Okay. Next is 2019-249, and that is a resolution authorizing us to participate in the Union County Co-op pricing agreement, which allows us to get more bang for our buck. Correct, Maria? Correct. And it's public safety equipment, am I correct? Uh, yes. Correct. Yes. yes. Next is 2019-250 is a extending the due date for the 2019 third quarter taxes. It's actually this, isn't it? So that is all I have. Pricing. We will have approval of bills and payroll. We had our discussion yeah. items. We had one, we have oh, another one. So oh, we have another one? You get the price. Yeah, What's the other one? I, don't, I couldn't find mine in my packet. I was looking for it. We, uh, are Surf you fishing here derby. to discuss oh, that's no. security? We asked him to discuss security and uh, parking. Just yeah. Yeah. He's not on the discussion agenda, but Doug is here to discuss a couple things. Well, okay. That would help me. Let's hit the derby thing real fast. Yeah, we go right we did. Chief. Cool. We've done this every year, am I correct? Yes. Okay. This is just standard thing. That the uh, Ed Berger from the um, Atlantic County Surf Fishing Derby has asked us to open up our beaches to the derby, allow people to drive their vehicles down there. They'll have their permit mm -hmm. from him. We've done it. Every, yeah, every year. Yeah. Okay. So that's all. Fine with so that. Yep. We have that. Do we have to do a resolution on that next month? Or no, just verbal. Let them do it. And okay. Then we'll get. I'll get together with the okay. chief. Do you know the dates, Lance? It's so the right uh, it's right here. It starts this year from September 23rd through November 17th, 2019. Okay. So okay. there we go. Closures, chief. Chief, there you, go. you have a few items. Do you want to lead us into the first or do you want to deal with the security first? I'll lead us into the first and then because we it's really just about a, kind of the kind of the facts that we've uncovered on the parking permits in the city. And I, I wanted to sort of bring us all to the same level of facts as we go forward trying to figure out how we handle this. So um, in the first ward from uh, Jackson to uh, Frankfurt. Frankfurt, and then we're considering extending that parking permit. Um, towards uh, to Little Rock or even Victoria, potentially, um, which after we kind of dug in and we did an inventory of the number of actual uh, parking places that are available to residents and guests, it's in the neighborhood of 650 uh, parking places that are in the two hour zone. So that on one hand is our basic inventory. On the other hand, we have over the years historically given So we've historically given um, each high-rise an 
a permit per bedroom and up to two visitor permits, which is in the neighborhood of 6,000 permits. Add to that the permits for residents in that area could be between another one to 2,000 permits. Add to that another 100 for employees in that area. So you're talking they in the park neighborhood, on top of each other? neighborhood of <laughs> stack parking. Stack 7, parking. to 8,000 permits, excuse me, versus a 650 spot inventory. So there's a there's a, something we've got to unpack there. And we have to figure out how other cities do it, you think? how we do it uh, in the most efficient way, and what's fair to all the residents, not just um, the uh, target group, the, the, the high-rise high rise group. That, that seems to be the imbalance in the first yeah. one. And that came up at our State of the City discussion. Right? It did, that yeah, was, yeah. It, it, it did, and this is sort of like the, 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 the follow-up from that and what we've learned through Jimmy and through Chief and and then um, don't those high rises do they do they all have parking facilities yeah they do so that's part of it I'm not asking for any answers or any ideas about okay. it just yet I just want you to know where we're at with it and that it's a know, big number as that's a huge at, number you got to look at it and and you know there's uh, and the answer is usually always in the middle um, there are cities that charge uh, and Cape May for instance well, I'm not saying we're Cape May but I'm just saying these are you know you got to find out what 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 the common practices are out there they charge up to three hundred and fifty dollars per season they have them uh, first come first serve for three hundred uh, uh, parking permits we're not we're not there but uh, other cities charge fifty to a hundred dollars for you know for for per what do we so charge limit. dollars a dollar a year a dollar a year so and there you go dollar <laughs> I mean, okay. I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. So it's not an answer. It's a it's a statement of facts. Work in progress. A work in yes. progress. Yes. Yes. Okay. Did right. you now you're? And I'm just going to add to that is that, with the theater project, hopefully, before the new year, coming to fruition, and the amount of building that's going on in the first ward, where there was once a lot of off street parking, the new flood elevation restrictions are requiring off-street parking. And with the garages that are being placed underneath houses now, it's a blessing to have it, but it's also um, a curse because for every parking space or every driveway they add, curb it's the curb cuts, which now takes, you're giving them one parking space under their house, but it's taking up two on the street. Right. So it's yep. just something we have to be aware of. Which other cities have as well. And which other cities have as well. If you drive through you know, Avalon, Stone Harbor, those kinds of cities. And, and we have to kind of, so this is, I think it's a good thing that you and the building department are now talking on real Absolutely. data on board. now and, and, and problem solving. There's so. a lot of former places that have renovated and have made what was once garages into legal living spaces, but they remained with the curb cuts. So that's also taken up parking yeah. spots. So we can close them up. Correct. Yep. So it's something that we're going to have to work one together. On, um, yeah. And I know there's Rouge, we people that, that added curb cuts to get the parking on their lawn where they don't have us. I've seen yes. some of that. So yeah, right across street. Yeah, <laughs> every morning I see that. It's something we're <laughs> aware of. It's a big question mark, but we we're gonna have to do something. Yeah. And sooner rather than later, we're gonna have to formulate a plan. Yeah. So yeah. that's where we are with that. Okay. So okay. Any thoughts you have? Please bring them to us. That's okay. And uh, the other thing is uh, building security. We've been working for the last three or four months trying to shore up City Hall in the, the best, most eye-pleasing, publicly accessible without turning the building over to potential problems that we have basically been lucky with. Bittner has not seen any violence like that, nor do I ever hope we do. It does not mean we should not prepare for it. And with all of the Homeland Security reports and the, and the building investigations we've done around the state, we are one of the last buildings to be as accessible as we are to the public, which has worked well for us. But I believe the time has come to maybe update our security in the building and add some things. So we reached out to a company uh, named Johnson Communications who deals with uh, sledge cars and doors 
stuff like that to secure our doors at least better. And uh, we had come up with a proposal from them, and they were the best company. We dealt with a bunch of them. They came up with the best proposal to uh, add sledge cards, uh, add door access with sledge cards, key fobs, or wristbands. Um, it keeps track of who goes in and out of our doors. It locks automatically behind you. I'm also going to be proposing in the future that the building after hours not be public accessible because of the police department being here. It's something that we've always uh, uh, ignored and we've allowed the public to have free access. I, I think those times are, are kind of have come and gone. And what we're, we're going to do is going to be adding a, after hours a kiosk at the Cambridge Avenue if the proposal is approved with a camera and they'll be talking to our dispatchers when they want to come in. The bathrooms and stuff like that are not going to be accessible to the public anymore. It's, we're one of the few that even allows that. In my opinion, it's a huge security risk because my dispatchers can't be keeping an eye on everybody who comes in. Right. It, it's tough. We also are going to be addressing the mayor's office issues with security there and add a similar camera outside Patty's door, which will be able to buzz people in. And we'll be doing the same outside upstairs into the uh, police area, which is my office and the administration's office. It's uh, not offensive. It's least intrusive. It's, it's the least we can do with the way things are without locking this down and building and really making it secure with metal detectors. And I don't think we're there, but I think we need to do something. And much like we did with Lafayette Avenue VECC, um, a little bit of security goes a long way, and it's going to take a little bit of retraining with the public, but they'll get used to it, and it's, you know, it's just a sign of the times. So I will be bringing a proposal to you in the near future with everything that I need, and it's probably going to be out of capital, which we already have money set aside in bond, and it's going to be about $100,000, mm -hmm. but it will get us moving in the right direction. So I asked Doug to come here and update you because as he said, he's ready to move forward with a proposal that would be on an agenda, and I wanted you to hear what, mm -hmm. what his, the thinking is. So have you heard anything alarming or something you really didn't like? Right. Has, as Chief explained it, I'm much more comfortable than what I heard just the other day. I saw a bill come across my desk for, you know. That's for something sure. different. Okay. Yeah. But, that, but now what he's saying makes that For makes the public, sense. the public will yeah. not notice anything right. when they come in during what work hours. What happens behind Patty. Yes. yes. It makes more sense now. Right. So now I'm comfortable with what, what the chief just explained. You're right. We need to have control over what, ha, who has access to this building. It's really, that's what it's going to yeah. come down to, Commissioner. I mean, there'll still be public access during the day, but it'll, it'll be controlled. Right. It's not going to be anybody can just open a door and walk in. Right. Those, that's got to stop. Yeah. We're going to be just making, they're still going to have that, that uh, approachable window where you can talk to people through it and everything like that. Nothing's really going to change. But for us, it's going to be a, a matter of, just personal security, you know that you're behind a secure area and not John Q. Citizen who's got a, an agenda is going to walk through your door and do whatever. So, Doug, during working hours, the exterior doors are still open? The exterior the doors, public. right, yes. Okay. At this time, Yeah, yes. this is office space. The talking. interiors, right. yep. However, at the close of, It'll close on now. weekends and yep. stuff like that, Locked. we really do have to. I mean, we've had a homeless we person a sleeping in our, in, our, in our stairwell which we've allowed during the cold times, but those times have come and gone again, right. mm -hmm. where we have to be a little more secure, and, and that's where I'm at. And everybody knows the way I feel about things like that. I, I, I would like to open my office to everybody, but even I feel you know, a little bit concerned at this point. So a little bit of announcer prevention goes a long way. So the and building we'll be will be, the exterior doors are get, will be locked by what, 4.30? Uh, whenever, Five. meetings will still be open, but we're gonna utilize at nighttime the Cambridge Avenue entrance is going to be the, the main entrance that I would use. Right. And it'll be much easier to police well, and surveil. Handicap accessible. Handicap accessible. The elevator's right there. Right. So, I mean, it, it's, it's a win-win for us. Little adjustment for everybody who's been here. Adjustment. So yeah. the, but the kiosk goes, notifies who? Dispatch? The kiosk for the back. Like for meetings, it'll still be open. Okay. But for when there's not a meeting, and there's only a few meetings during, during the week or whatever, mm -hmm. you'll enter and I'll, I'll bring it the next meeting. I will show you the beautiful PowerPoint. It'll be a, a kiosk, just like any other. Press the button. Dispatcher will say, how you doing? Wait, where? How may I direct you? I need to see an officer. OK, they'll be buzzed in. They'll be waiting in the hallway. Mm -hmm. It's really That's simple. Good. And that'll be right at the same time. And they'll have a camera, yes. 
So if it's somebody who needs police help, they can get themselves in real quick. They'll, they'll be buzzed in. There'll also be an emergency button they can press too. It's really sophisticated, but it's not as it's not as intricate as you might think. It's it's really cool, <laughs> and it's really I mean it's 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 public friendly. Okay. So it, it's really the time has come. So this code does still has a, a pass through window. So yeah, that has be, to change. That, that's going to be my that's going to be phase one and a half two yeah. is going to be adding what we have is a and I hate to use the word ballistic, but it's let's just say it's it's resistant right. glass that cannot be broken that uh, the public will still be able, you'll be able to slide open if you want to and talk to somebody. But for the most part, we need to secure our employees as much as we can from anybody. People get irritated over the slightest things now, whether it's taxes, building codes, violations. Court. Remember, we have our police department, our court here. Yeah. I mean, you've got a lot of things for people to potentially get angry at. Yeah. And we've always gone under the impression that it would never be Vetna. Mm -hmm. And I just think that it's time to maybe just tighten it up a little bit. And this is the best way to do it in my opinion. I agree. I think we're thank all on you. the same page. Uh, uh, yeah. so good explanation, too, because I, I thank have you. questions. Yeah. And that I, good. I would just ask for a thorough review of that sledge card system. I know there's a couple, like Hafel that makes some. There's a couple that I, I'd like. I, I, we when, when I, I want to make sure that we're buying the right hardware from them. And I, I trust your, your advice on it. But I'd like You should to. always question it. That's your job. Yeah. And I, I, I will show to you why I think this, country, this company is the best. And you'll go with your, with your thought. Yeah. So I will bring a, I'll have it. I'll even have them come in. Good. If you would like to do a presentation, they do a great presentation. They sold us on it, and it's and the sledge boards can be kept. My in only concern is where, uh, the expensive the part. You can rub the bracelet there. on the door Make key sure fob. It's been For bad. my guys that are uh, usual, because we utilize the uh, the holding cells and everything. My guys, I would get them to be bracelets. They would just wipe the bracelets so they can still control suspects and Got stuff like that. Right, because so, they won't be able to sledge. And we just have cards <laughs> right. like that. Right. That's what the county right. has. Yeah. And it can be and it can be formulated into our IDs. That's what I said. You can put it right exactly. And you know, so you know who's going in and out. We keep track of it. So, like That's I said, one thing. we don't have an ID. None of us have ID. Come up and see me. I'm the ID guy too. <laughs> really? Like Donna Peterson. It's at the bottom of my little resume, but it's one of those titles. <laughs> Stop I guess. it. <laughs> ID maker. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> one question. Yes, ma'am. Which I'm sure you handled it already, but I, the, the building's historical. Yes. So we won't have any issues with putting anything on the outside of the, no, I mean, no, the doors. This is the interior. Even the fittings, the fittings okay. that they, they provide are um, historical society friendly. Okay, great. And the doors, Good. some doors will need to be replaced, but most of the doors are retrofitted. Okay. And they, they can they can be retrofitted into the into the existing doors. Okay. So we've pretty much right. thought of everything, but I'm sure you guys will come up something else. Thank you. The kitchen guy will do that. We you know, so. yeah. That's what we do here. That's what you do. That is exactly what you do. So that's right. So that's all I have for you. Well, thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thanks, Chief. And you're, Thanks. we're going to have a resolution for the next month? For next month, I will have this prepared once. But I would like to uh, maybe, with uh, Tim and, and Maria, bring them, bring them in and let show you what, we, what they have. Yeah. Show and tell? Show and tell. Yeah. Great. All right? Yeah. Great. Now, if awesome. you don't need me anymore, I'll be leaving. We don't need you. Thank you so much. Races. Thank you for having me. See. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, care, thank you, Doug. Bye -bye. I agree with you. <coughs> That's it for discussion, correct? I think so, yeah. Okay, so do I have a motion to open public portion for so the items that we discussed? So moved. Do I have a second? Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's open to the public if anyone like to speak on anything that we've discussed so far. Is it what we discussed already? Uh, that's, oh, that's the latest. We're, we're going to have another one. Yeah. We'll jump. Don't worry, we're going to move fast. I see none. Do I have a motion to close public portion? Motion to close. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do I have a motion to close workshop portion of the meeting? So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We have no minutes to approve. We have no introductions of ordinances. We have no adoption of ordinances or public hearings. We have a public comment section now for the resolutions that we will be voting on by consent. Do I have a motion to open public comment? Motion to open public on resolutions. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone from the public like to speak on the resolutions? No. Okay. Motion to close. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mo uh, do I have a motion to adopt, where am I? Resolutions 2019-241 to 2019-251 by consent. So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Mr. Kriebel? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. 
Uh, Al, would you like to read our bills and payroll to be approved tonight? Sure. Uh, our bill list uh, tonight is uh, 1796000 98104, uh, mostly that's the school payment. Uh, mm -hmm. And for the payroll, it's 649,811.99. Do I have a motion to approve bills and payroll stated by the CFO? So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Kriebel? Yes. Commissioner Landgraf? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Do we have any other announcements or safety report? We're good? Nope. Okay. We're good. We're good? Okay. Um, I, I have one. Is that a uh, uh, commissioner report? I'm sorry. We, Next we would be, that. That's fine. Yeah, sorry. that's fine. Commissioner comments, reports. Uh, I, I just have one um, one thing I wanted to pass on. Uh, it's a good, a positive thing. Um, despite um, our um, our ladder truck getting hit or getting into an accident, um, the repairs are fully covered, including a rental vehicle. Uh, through our insurance is going to have a quint, which is allows us to train on a vehicle that we're considering purchasing in the future. So I didn't know that it was. We okay. didn't know that it was okay. So there was a there was an accident, and um, that is underway. But a vehicle like that is, you know, is a six month uh, could be as much as that. For what rental agency do you go to for a ladder truck? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I want to know. <laughs> I know we. Yeah. Hurts. Hey, excuse me. Uh, Enterprise? Right. Enterprise. You got to make sure you return Just it with eight the full wheels. Yeah, right. you, you, right. you still have to make sure you return it with a full tank of diesel, by the way. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Jeez. So, yeah. It's a true. What happened it's true. With the truck? Um, there was an accident on the street. Someone was parked in the wrong, uh, illegally, and it couldn't make a turn. Oh. There were some doors on the side that, and some equipment, us. some uh, equipment doors that got, that got damaged. But it's it's a it's a million plus vehicle that takes a lot of uh, that has to be re repaired and replaced by. By um, you know qualified. The car was parked legal or illegal. Illegal, of course. Yeah. And so our truck couldn't make the turn. Our right. truck could not. Our, our our ladder truck. This is our biggest vehicle. It's Shouldn't they pay more. for that? Sorry. Shouldn't the person that parked illegal pay? Well, eventually, they will. I'm their insurance. Sure, our insurance, insurance company will go after their insurance company. Yeah, okay. no dollars out really other okay. other than our our um, <laughs> our deductible, just like okay. uh, normally would work. So. Okay. But on the uh, but on the next uh, next thing I wanted to mention was just to see our fire department at work saving dollars. If, uh, my grandmother used to say, "Boil the bones to make the soup." After you, you know to get uh, to wring every little bit of value out of something, we have this two hundred fifty thousand dollar grant for air packs. Uh, it was an expense to us, but as you drill down and how that's going to play out, we're taking um, the air packs that we have at, at um, govguild.com. We're probably going to get somewhere north of fifty thousand dollars for that equipment, and then we're also um, saving money in the training and uh, in, in for that for that we're doing locally now instead right. of going out. And then the the um, the balance of uh, the equipment that we're not going to be used is going to be given to um, that that isn't worthy of gov.com is going to be given to uh, volunteer fire departments that need that kind of. And that is goodwill on, our, on their behalf. So there's, there's a lot of um, really working that. Um, um, uh, oh, we're also taking some of that um, equipment uh, to the county to train on, and trading it in kind for for training okay. facilities. We so have to pay for training. Yeah. So there's a lot. There's a lot going Creative on. Creative financing. Exactly. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. So just thought we'd sh share some wins every once in a while. Right? Yeah. That's a, that's good stuff, hmm. especially when it comes to money. Okay. Lance, you okay? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so um, you, know, you know what? I should update you guys on the pier. Oh, I'm so confused with those. Yeah. Emails. So <laughs> the pier restrooms that we're we're trying to get built this winter uh, ran into a little bit of a hurdle with a permit that had expired in 2017. Um, we're we're back on schedule. We have to get an, an updated permit for that. Uh, it's a CAFA permit, Coastal Area Facilities Review Act permit. Been on the back and forth emails with DEP and their staff. Their first question was, do you have a sewerable area map that includes the pier? We look at the one the county has, it does not include the pier. I called up Dick Carter, our former city engineer, because he rebuilt that pier. I said, Dick, do you ever take care of this? He says, yep, sent me a letter last night, amended what's called our 208 plan to include the pier specifically with the restroom on it. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a big hurdle that could have caused some significant delays. Uh, we're in the right 
lane now, we believe. Um, we've gotten some support from Senator Brown's office. Um, and a summer resident happens to be the deputy commissioner of the DEP, so that helps a little bit too. So I'll be using it. Yes, <laughs> well, he lives right there. His summer place is right there. So um, just to, to get us in the right lane. Yeah. So we should be good to go. We're, we're gonna refile that application now. Uh, for not only the restrooms but the uh, snack, bar. snack bar out there too so yeah. yeah was the original permit did it include a snack bar on the larger facility that we're not doing at all there was a I don't third build there was well, there was a, there was a, a second building that was not even being I don't think it was uh, that was the locker room for the, the locker room, room. Yeah. yeah which was yeah. part of that permit. right so I'm just thinking does it help us in any way if there was some type we're, of we're going smaller much smaller yeah. smaller so that that's that's what they look at it's on a pier that exists. Are smaller, it, it's, I guess honestly, it's a very frustrating. I, I was about to say the best, the <laughs> most frustrating thing is that we have no idea. It could be a week. It could be a month. Or no, it won't be a week. Okay. I can pretty much guarantee. It that. won't be a week. <laughs> could be, so it could be a month. It could be six months. Exactly. It's probably not a month. Yeah. <laughs> probably not a month. We're, I've, I've impressed upon them oh. that we need to construct this in the fall. Yeah. Because we don't want to be building it in the dead of winter. Right. Yeah, and we want it up. For we want it up for the spring fishing season. Right. as well as the, the next summer season. So I mean, you still have to put it out to bid. Right. So I would, I would start that now. Yeah. Okay. Put, put that out to bid now. Yeah. Um, and get that, get that going, get a right. contractor in, get it moving forward. Um, because uh, it, it's moving in the, in the process. We're in the okay. right, like I said, I've said a couple times, we're in the right lane now. It seemed like we were kind of meandering. <laughs> All right. From okay. Left passing lane to dead slow right lane. So. Uh, okay. We're moving I, forward. I know this is going to sound like I'm kissing up, but I, I, you don't know how often I You're reflect on up. how much you each know in your individual areas and how hard some of these things would be to get done <laughs> if we had somebody that didn't know this stuff. Like, this is your area. I mean, I can't imagine what You're we'd be going I through I know <laughs> is right yeah. to get this done without someone who knows this stuff. Yeah. It, or the right person to call. I mean, look, I, I actually emailed him last night while I was at a hearing out in Hamilton. I e emailed Roger and because he asked me to go to lunch today with Dick. I said, hey, does Dick have anything on this? Mm -hmm. And within an hour, I had the letter in my inbox. Right. And I sent it right up to, to DEP. Right. And she's like, this is great. Solves that issue. So it, it's. It, it would just be so difficult. Yeah, the relationships are there. Even the words are tough to understand sometimes. <laughs> Acronyms. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks That's all I have. Okay. All right. So the next is the public comment section where you can get up and speak about anything. Do I have a motion to open public comment? Motion to open public comment. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. You just aye. come to the microphone. You have to state your name and address and then say whatever you wish. So I'm uh, Ira Winston, 111 South Buffalo. First, I just wanted to comment. I attended your meeting a few weeks ago, the public meeting, and I was super impressed with all the things you guys have done to make this place better. Oh, thank you. I you know, live in Philadelphia or outside of Philadelphia during the year, and I just contrast this government to the one in my small town, and you guys are professionals and you work together. And those are two things that we don't have, <laughs> and it's great to see. So that's just a, a word of thanks. Thank you. And thank then you. Um, the other, other comment I have is, um, so I guess, before next season, we're going to be opening, you know, one bar and one movie theater that serves alcohol. And right now, you know, most of the restaurants and stores and everything, you know, we're pretty closed up by about 10:30, maybe 11 o'clock on, on, on a on a good night. Um, and now I think we're probably going to have some places that are open somewhat later and serving alcohol. And what did we do? Yeah, we put restrictions. We did. I think it's regarding how late they could stay open. I think it's 1 a.m. Was it 1 a.m.? I have to double check. It was I either midnight or 1 a.m. I think right. it's midnight. Yeah. yeah, I think we've gone back. Okay, well, minutes. yeah, mi mi midnight's cool, but it's just like it all is of a late. sudden, right. it's later, you're, it's later you're right. and you're going to have right. people drinking outside, and right. it's just a, it's like a completely new thing. Right. You know. That's why we put we 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 put those parameters because we didn't want mm -hmm. those facilities open till four in the morning. Great. I just. You know, you have like four or five months, or maybe even more than that, because it won't really pick up till the season. Right. Just keep in mind what you're going to do about, you know, sort of policing those areas. Right. I mean, yeah, you've the got police a, is on it. Right. You've got a huge police force, or a, a, a appropriately sized uh, right. police force that could 
easily take care of this, but you know, it, it could become uh, you know, an issue. I mean, I'm sure you already have the issue right now with house parties, so it's not a right. completely <laughs> new, uh, new issue for the town. And they're both restaurants. Right, so at least people will it's be It's not eating. like a bar, nightclub, right. The okay. restaurants. But anyway, it's just something to keep right. in mind because that tends to be a, a you know, a, a, right. we've never attracted that, right. that, that extra trouble here. Right. Yeah, so the, one of the things that, the, um, that we have to do is train officers to have officers on duty that are specifically trained in the rules and regulations that the ABC has. And we started that a year in advance of putting the first bid up. But your, your points are well taken. Yeah. So we're preparing on the police force side, but I think we're also preparing just in general from a uh, from a um, community standpoint to be prepared for the parking issues. We're talking about that a lot. We're, um, but it's uh, we appreciate the, your, your comment. Yeah, but they've also got to, I mean, Santucci's is an established business. They know how to do this. They've got to train their servers. That's right. To right. Ex to their bartenders they, to right. detect someone. They, they learn they alcohol shouldn't. awareness. That's the restaurant right. industry but, I mean, is he, trained. But I mean, I'm sure he knows that. Exactly. And yeah. I think the other operator also they have operator. other they have a number of them you got they're it. not like yeah they're not like brand new at this no no it'll take some adjustment but i think it'll be a good one. Oh no i'm i'm looking forward to it i'm just just so a little right. nervous well thanks, thanks for, for coming, coming and now you just have to move here permanently uh, well <laughs> <laughs> give me five years okay <laughs> sounds good anyone else from the public like to make any comments no all right motion to close do i have a second second the motion all in favor aye aye, aye. Do we have an executive session? I don't think so. We do not. We do not. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I have a second? Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourn. Have a great weekend, everyone. You too. Yeah.